Director Watt, thank you for your service and your leadership. I want to ask about a few of the post-conservatorship uh, priorities highlighted in the perspectives document you sent to this committee in January. Do you have concerns that a system with too many guarantors could result in a race to the bottom where guarantors chase volume by eroding underwriting standards and pricing? Yes, I do have that concern. Do you believe that a mandate on guarantors to serve a national market is necessary to promote affordable and sustainable home ownership opportunities for credit worthy borrowers, including those in urban and rural underserved areas of the country? I believe that, yes. And do you agree that guarantors should be prohibited from offering, offering pricing discounts to lenders based on their higher volumes because it disadvantages the smaller and uh, community lenders? I do believe that, yes. All right. I, I deducted that from the, the, the documents, but I just wanted to put it on the record. Data released last week by the Federal Reserve Bank of New York shows housing wealth is becoming increasingly concentrated among older Americans, a marked change from before the crisis when younger and older Americans had similar shares of home equity. Moreover, home ownership rates continue to be down overall from their peaks, but this is particularly true for millennials. With mounting student loan debt, a limited supply of affordable housing, the difficulties of assembling a down mortgage, a down payment, I should say, I'm concerned that too many of those who are coming of age during the financial crisis and recession are missing out on their opportunity to have a piece of the American dream. So under your leadership uh, at FHFA, what steps have the GSEs taken to expand home ownership opportunities for younger Americans? And looking ahead, second part of the question, what do we in Congress need to do to ensure millennials are not precluded from assessing affordable home ownership opportunities? Well, we've, uh, we have taken some serious looks at the burden that uh, student loan debt uh, is, is uh, placing on millennials, and we are uh, looking at pilots uh, that would address that, um, or, or uh, we've got to do it responsibly because uh, student loan debt is a debt uh, that gets taken into account in debt to income ratios. Uh, the question is, are there ways that we could um, um, uh, me uh, mitigate that by uh, perhaps having parents uh, um, uh, uh, be backers to, uh, to millennials? Um, uh, the biggest problem is they, they don't, millennials don't have down payments. Um, they don't, they have uh, exorbitant debt uh, because of students. Um, nobody takes into account rental payments in assessing credit worthiness, or at least the credit uh, rating um, uh, uh, companies don't do that. Uh, so there's this uh, cascade of things that make it disadvantageous for millennials. And in addition, uh, our studies indicate that millennials are waiting later and later to get married, which is a, has historically been a true indicator of when somebody wants to buy a home. Um, so, you know, there are all kinds of things that go into this, and we try to take all of those things into account as we structure programs that, um, that um, um, will at least try to address, if not completely eliminate these problems. I so just looking uh, at, yeah. at what Congress could do, if we, for example, uh, there is legislation that calls for allowing a trillion dollars in student loan debt uh, collectively nationwide to be uh, ultimately refinanced at historical lows, we would significantly cut the debt and that might create an opportunity for those millennials who want to purchase a home to be in a better position to do so. That would be one of the things that would be outside our lane, but um, I, you know that would be that would be a legislative decision. So I try to stay out of those. <laughs> Finally, I liked it better when you were in the legislative decision making. But <laughs> Finally, uh, FHFA uh, recently closed a request for input on updating Fannie and Freddie Mac's credit scoring model. Uh, S twenty one fifty five, which passed the House yesterday, requires the GSEs to establish a new process for approving the use of other credit scoring models. And I have concerns that this provision, which will soon become law, will delay your ability to update the credit scoring model, ultimately harming those consumers that could benefit from increased access. 
On top of that, I think this provision raises questions about competition and consolidation of power by the consumer reporting agencies. Do you, now that the input period is closed, do you have concerns about competition in the credit scoring marketplace? Well, we had concerns about it uh, initially because um, uh, credit scoring is one of those things where, um, you know, competition is good if you're competing on the right things. But if you're competing just to get more business um, in the credit scoring arena, that's not a good thing. Uh, so we, we were very concerned about that and put a bunch of questions in our request for input uh, um, um, so that we could get feedback. And we, we remain concerned about it. And people who commented uh, were, were concerned about it. Um, so um, regarding the, the uh, provision in, the, in Senator Crapo's bill uh, um, on credit scoring, um, it could have come at a, at a better time for us, I would have to say that. Um, and uh, we're trying to, um, to see whether we can proceed with uh, what we had started um, by making the request for input on credit scoring and get to a conclusion that will, that will now have to be an interim conclusion because the bill, as I read it, would require us now to go back and make an assessment and set up a uh, set of rules about how to assess uh, credit scoring um, uh, agencies. So um, uh, we don't want to delay, and, and, and that's a, uh, what, two, two and a half year build out under the statute. It probably will take even longer than that, depending on how you define assessing uh, credit scoring models. Um, so it could, it could have some impact on our ability to move forward on this. Um, and uh, so, um, but, you know, we will comply with the, with the statute if it's, uh, if it's signed by the president. 